Almost every day, you know, it seems that the scientific community has found another way to make some 1950s B sci-fi movie into an actual reality. And today is no exception. Oh yes, it seems that the boffins in the scientific community, you know, those people with massive intellects who wear, like, white, pristine white coats and, you know, have all kinds of amazingly intelligent things to say and tell us. Science! Well, they have, it seems, managed to clump together some kind of a mass or gloop of associated and assorted brain cells into some kind of a coherent thing. What the hell is that shit? Of sorts. And, uh, well, they've managed to get it to play a video game. I, yes, I know. It's sounds it sounds like it sounds but no let's hop on over to the bbc and see exactly uh, let's pick the bones of this story apart because let's just say it's a uh, not something you hear every day right from the bbc news lab grown brain cells play video game pong no pong is that game that's the one. Yes, uh, not exactly the most high-tech video game ever created, as you can imagine. One of the first, indeed, and uh, rather simple at that. But, oh, Jesus, I can actually remember. That's a thing, this. Wow. Anyway, let's not uh, dwell on that particular morsel. Uh, anyway, back to the BBC. Lab-grown brains has played video game Pong um, by Palab Gosh or Gosh. Alab Ghosh. Uh, researchers have grown brain cells in a lab that have learned to play the 1970s tennis-like video game Pong. Uh, they say their, quote, mini-brain can sense and respond to its environment. This is, uh, you know, until relatively recently, the stuff of sci-fi movies. Uh, the ones that were made in the 50s and 60s. You know, those kind of, the ones with the kind of dodgy special effects uh, that we all grew up on. Well, some of us grew up watching and loving, uh, but now they're all coming true. They're all they're all becoming reality. Uh, so now we have this uh, mini brain of clumped together brain cells or brain matter uh, grown in a lab, and it's now b b playing uh, video games. Yes, um, writing in the journal Neuron. Uh, Dr. Brett Kagan of the company Cortical Labs claims to have created the first quote sentient lab-grown brain in a dish. Other experts describe the work as, quote, exciting, but say calling the brain cells sentient is going uh, too far. Um, we could find no better term to describe the device, Dr. Kagan says. It is, it is able to take in information from an external source, process it, and then respond to it in real time. It's alive! It's alive! It's alive! Uh, so you're kind of getting into brain territory there, I think. That's a picture of... Uh, what's this? The human brain is more adaptable and learns faster than current artificial intelligence AI systems. Could it be a better model for the next generation of computers? Well, well, don't be surprised if they, you know, if they can kind of marry these two whole things together, and then you end up with. Wait a minute. Okay, let's hope they don't end up with that. Um, mini brains were first produced in 2013 to study micro. Microcephaly, a genetic disorder where the brain is too small and have since been used for research into brain development. Okay, so they're, you know, this is coming from a lofty place. They're trying to get to grips with various um, uh, brain uh, uh, diseases and brain malfunctions and brain damage, I suppose. So it's all coming from a pretty good place. Uh, but this is the first time they have been plugged into and interacted with an, ex an external environment. In this case, a video game. Uh, the research team uh, who are the research team? Oh yeah, the research team grew human brain cells grown from stem cells and some from mouse embryos to a collection of 800,000. I don't know if that's big or small in the brain community uh, terms. I assume it's enough to play a video game, at least. Uh, connected this mini brain to the video game via electrodes, revealing which side the ball was on and how far from the paddle. Uh, in response, uh, the cells produced electrical activity of their own, so they reacted to the whole, 
input of information. They expended less energy as the game continued. But when the ball passed a paddle and the game restarted with the ball at a random point, they expended more recalibrating to a new unpredictable situation. The mini brain learned to play in five minutes. Uh, it often missed the ball, but its success rate was well above random chance. Although with no consciousness it does not know it's playing Pong in the way a human player would, the researchers stress. Well, I think we could all kind of understand that. Um, beer Pong. Dr. Kagan hopes the technology might eventually be used to test treatments for neurodegenerative diseases such as Alzheimer's, which is, a, again, as I said, is a lofty goal there. And that's, that's good that this... Um, type of, of research is taking place. Uh, quote, uh, when people look at tissues in a dish, at the moment they are seeing if there is activity or no activity. But the purpose of brain cells is to process information in real time, he says. Um, this is Dr. Kagan. Tapping into their true function unlocks so many much more, so many more research areas that can be explored in a comprehensive way. Next, Dr. Kagan plans to test the impact alcohol has on the mini brain's ability to play So they're gonna get the brain cells. They're gonna get the brain cells pissed. I don't know. Really, is this rag week over there? If it reacts in a similar way to human brain, this would underscore just how effective the system might be as an experimental stand-in. <laughs> There's a couple of a couple of lads you wouldn't want to meet in a dark night. Um. Dr. Kagan's description of his system as sentient, however, differs from many dictionary definitions, uh, which state it means having the capacity to have feelings and sensations. Uh, Cardiff Psychology School Honorary Research Associate Dr. Dean Burnett prefers the term thinking system. Uh, there is information being passed around and clearly used, causing changes, so the stimulus they are receiving has been thought about in a basic way, he says. Uh, mini brains are likely to become more complex as the research progresses, but Dr. Kagan's team are working with bio bioethicists to ensure they do not accidentally create a conscious brain. <laughs> Jesus. They do not accidentally create a conscious brain. With all the ethical questions that would raise, uh, we have to see this new technology very much like the nascent computer industry. When the first transistors were janky prototypes <laughs> and likely to explode in your face. Not very reliable, but after years of dedicated research, they led to huge technological marvels across the world, he says. Artificial intelligence AI researchers have already produced devices that can beat grandmasters at chess. But Professor Carl Friston of University College London, who is working with Dr. Kagan, says the mini brain learned without it being taught, and so is more adaptable and flexible. Well, there you go. Uh, what do you think of that? There's uh, some certainly some spicy stuff go, uh, going on there. Uh, but let's have let's have a final word from um, from the conversation. <laughs> Lab-grown brain cells can play pong, so should they have legal rights? Nope.